of the television sitcom and no one really thought a show about a poor, loudmouth bus driver and his feisty wife would make people laugh. But boy, did we laugh. Since the first classic episodes, which were shot in 1952, people from all over the world have fallen in love with the Honeymooners and they've continued that love affair every single day since. This fall, we celebrate 40 years of the Honeymooners and today we're going to meet some of the people that made that show the powerhouse ratings grabber that has remained right up until today. First, she wasn't the first or the last woman to play Ralph Cramden's wife, Alice, but she sure was the best. And she's the one when you say Alice, you think of her. Would you please welcome Audrey Meadows? <laughs> You just never think of anybody but you. That's right. I replaced Bert Kelton. See, you never. Because she was on Cavalcade. She was the first yeah. one. And who followed you? I don't remember uh, that. Uh, Sue Ann Langdon. Don't remember. For uh, just a few shows, and then in Florida, because I was married to Bob Six then, and right. I couldn't go to Florida to work. Uh, Sheila McRae. Sheila McRae yeah. a little bit. That's yeah. right. But boy, yeah. whenever you say Alice, it's you. How did you get it? Oh. <laughs> Well, I do rather strange things to get a job. And I was in a show on Broadway. I was playing opposite Phil Silvers in Top Banana. And my manager ran into Bullets. You remember Bullets Durgum, yes, who course. was Jackie's manager. And uh, Bullets said, oh, you've got to help me. He's Think of somebody. We have to get an actress to play the part of Alice. And he said, well, I'm going up to see Audrey. She'll think of somebody. So they came to my apartment and uh, told me the problem, and I mentioned every single actress I could think of in New York and Hollywood, and each one bullet said, she's too tall, she's too short, she isn't funny. I said, you can't be so picky. You're going to go on the air in about two weeks, and you've got to make up your mind. All of a sudden, it hit me. Top Banana was going to go on the road. I said, oh, I just thought of the great, oh, you're so stupid, you're so dumb, the greatest, uh, she'd be sensational. And they said, who, who? I said, me. And Bullet said, oh, come on, be serious. I said, what do you mean, be serious? I said, you've seen all these other women make an appointment for me. Right. So I went up to see Jackie the next day. He was very nice. He was noncommittal. Uh, he asked the two men to stay, and I went up, as you usually do, you know, right, and you wait right, by yourself, right. by the elevator. And uh, finally, the men came out, and I said to Val, well, what did he say? He said, she's all wrong. She's too young. She's too pretty. Why don't you guys take the needles out of your heads? Right, right. Well, I wasn't really serious, Joan, about getting the part until I was turned down. And I thought, he ought to know better than that. He's too talented not to know that I could do it. Right. So walking down the street, I said, Val, get a, a photographer to come to my apartment tomorrow morning. I won't get out of bed till you ring the bell. I look pretty grand when I first get up in the morning. <laughs> and I won't put any makeup on. I'll do something scroogey, you know, with my right. hair. And I got a blouse, and I tore the sleeve, and an apron, and they rang the bell the next morning. And unfortunately, my mother was visiting me, and she thought I was having glamour pictures taken. <laughs> <laughs> and she kept saying, Audrey, put some makeup on, put some makeup on. So we got the pictures developed right away and sent to Jackie with no name on them. And Jackie took one look, and he said, oh, my God, he said, that's Alice. Who is she? Where is she? Can we get her? And that was you. And, and that, that was me. Oh, my God, you're going to show yeah, it. Yeah, we're showing, but we have, we have it on the big screen. <laughs> Let me ask, what was the first performance like? You went in, were you terrified? Oh, terrified. Yeah. Two I was weeks. psychopathic. Well, each day, he only rehearsed, uh, uh, no, I was only called for rehearsal the week before he went on. <sighs> I went up on Monday, and they said, oh, what a shame, Miss Meadows, didn't anybody call you? He had to leave. Come back Tuesday at the same time. Tuesday, I went back. Oh, he had a doctor's appointment. He's not here. Come Wednesday, I said, I can't, I have a matinee. Right. Thursday, I s went in and there were scripts, and he was there. I was so excited. All we did was have pictures taken holding the scripts. Right. right. And off he went. I never had a rehearsal with a man until Saturday, and we were going on the air live at 8 o'clock. Oh. With an audience? With an audience. Oh, my we God. We did it in Studio 50. Oh. And finally, he rehearsed everything. He rehearsed the June Taylor dances till they were just falling on the floor. Right. And Eileen Barton was the guest singer. She rehearsed forever. And I'm looking at the clock. And I turned to Art, and I said, we going to do this soon? He said, oh, yes, oh, yes. We did it in our own clothes, without the props. 
sat back in the theater, and more time is going by, and I said, well, when do we do the blocking? He said, you just did it. That's it? I said, when's the next run through? He said, you just did it. I said, how about dress rehearsal? He said, you just did it. <laughs> I sat there, Joan, the biggest tears streaming down my face. And Val said, don't cry, don't cry, your eyes are gonna swell up, and they'll just be a mess, and they'll be red and terrible. So I went up to my dressing room about six o'clock, and I learned his lines and Art's lines to protect myself. I have never been such a psychopathic, ner nervous wreck in my entire life. I can imagine. I don't know how I ever got through that show. Did he forget they, a lot? Did, did you, was that good to know the lines? Yes, especially when we went to the half hour and then the full hour. Yeah. Because he did not like to rehearse, but he was right. Because? It kept the comedy fresher. You didn't get to depend upon a line. Because every audience makes it different, as you know. How did you, if you was out living between him and Art Carney, and you're no shakes, uh, slim shakes yourself, how did you not laugh when things would happen? It's funny, I never laughed. <laughs> I ne that is funny, I no. never laughed. <laughs> no, I think probably the fact that it was very real to me. Yeah. I mean, oh, it was funny when I read the script the night right, before. Right, right. But when you're playing it, it isn't funny. It's very serious yeah. when you're telling somebody off and it happens to be a funny line. Yeah, yeah. But Go on. The, the only time I really, really he got me laughing was at the Paramount. What happened? We played the Paramount six shows a day. And he and Art, which they couldn't do on the live show, decided they would get me laughing. They did the most terrible things. He made up the most awful lines. And he said things like, uh, Oh, I know all about you, Alice, up on the roof with Pollocks. <laughs> I didn't know what it meant. I thought, what is that? And then, he, I don't know, he, he went on about the Chinese uh, the restaurant and, the, oh, all this nonsense. And it struck me funny because the two of them were just lined up, giving me this look. And I started to laugh. And I couldn't stop laughing. And he turned to the audience and he said, you know what I love about her? When she laughs, her stomach bounces. <laughs> <laughs> that is all I had to hear. I went to sit down in the chair by the, the old kitchen table, and the leg fell off. And I went <laughs> right over backwards. What about costumes? Did you ever want to... What was the dumbest costume? Because they, they put you in some get-up sometimes. Well... You're always in the lousy was, robe. This what, is your robe, isn't it? This is a robe yeah. I wore in countless shows. Yeah, there's the robe. And I'll never be that thin again. Uh, oh, when I look at those old shows. And this is an apron right. that I wore. And this is your apron. But, you know, Jackie was so good to everybody. He was marvelous, and he would never get rid of anybody. We had the nicest wardrobe mistress, whose real joy in life, besides getting our clothes, was drinking brandy. <laughs> and she nipped all the time. And we had a thing where we'd be coming home from a wedding. And I had a, one of those old-fashioned tulle skirts, great big tulle skirt. And it was miles too long, so I took it up and put safety pins all the way around. So all she had to do, you don't have to hem tulle, as you we know. Just cut. just cut it. Well, we never paid any attention to anything. You know, we did it once and that was it. You never wore your costume. I put the costume on. And she had been nipping, so she had cut it and cut it and cut it. I looked like Shirley Temple. And I ran to Jackie, and I said, what am I going to do, Jack? Look at this dress. Oh, he said, get in the kitchen as fast as you can, and I'll try and stand in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> and he's standing in front of me. I disappeared. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What about the money? Someone told me you ended up making more money than he did from the honeymooners. Because you had a good lawyer. Uh, what happened? Yes, eventually. Uh huh. Yeah, t explain well, that. Well, both my brothers are lawyers. And one brother was in New York. And then Morty Becker, you know, from the union. Right. Marvelous lawyer. They were representing me. And nobody really thought about reruns in those days. We never thought it would go on and on and on forever like this. But I used to dream up things, and I'd call my brother and say, I just thought of something I'd like in the contract. And he'd say, it's too late. You can't do that now. And I said, well, of course I can. And he said, oh, how, what are you basing on, Audrey? I said, girls' rules. <laughs> I've always used that. It's right. wonderful. It yeah. works for everything. It works great with a husband. Yeah. And uh, so they just uh, negotiated for months and months. But Art was my problem because he was salaried over me and billed over me. And I begged him to get a lawyer. But finally, uh, I think it was my brother who was fighting for 
no cutoff ever, and a sliding scale down to something that would go on forever. If it, hap if it indeed went on forever, yeah. which so is silly. They, they were trying to hold fast after the fifth rerun, and he said, look, I'm not saying when, I'm saying if this should go on. And the if gave it to me. So I'm still getting paid, which is lovely. Oh, isn't that <laughs> come back we're going to meet Alice's favorite upstairs neighbor so stay with us Alice, what's the matter with you why do you always have to act like a clown she should have married an undertaker <laughs> you know, I'm trying to clear, cheer you up a little oh I understand come on Trixie you know Ed he didn't mean any harm I wouldn't want him any other way I don't even want him this way <laughs> And today, we are, as I said, we are celebrating 40 years of that classic TV sitcom, The Honeymooners. My next guest joined the cast of The Honeymooners in 1950, before it was even a full-length sitcom. We watched her for four decades go as the woman who played Alice Cramden's friend and neighbor, Trixie Norton. Will you please welcome Joyce Randolph? <laughs> Let's just start with, how did you get Trixie? Oh, well, I'd been doing lots of other television, and I knew people, and one day, Joe Cates called up. Phoebe Cates' was father, but he's a big <laughs> producer in his own right, and he was producing, or he was associate producer at Dumont Channel 5 for um, the Cavalcade of Stars, which starred Jackie Gleason. And he said, uh, can you come over and do a live Clorettes commercial? And I said, okay. And he said, wear flats because the guy is short and everything. We did the funny commercial. It went well. He's on the phone a few weeks later. We're redoing the Clorettes commercial. Okay, I did that. He's on the phone a few weeks later. Um, Jackie Gleason has written a serious sketch with the writers. And some girls have to come in and audition, look older, and the writers will audition you. Well, I tried to look older, and that worked. And I got the role doing this, um, I guess, an actress in a tank, no, a housewife in a tank town in this big, star comes back and it's Gleason and we meet in his dressing room and have a serious little talk. <laughs> well, that was the sketch. But it, it must have been all right because a few weeks later, Joe Cates is again on the phone. And he said, have you seen this uh, sitcom we started called The Honeymooners? And I said, no, I don't even have a television set. <laughs> so he said, well, there's uh, Jackie Gleason and Pert Kelton and Art Carney is a sewer worker and we now need a wife for the sewer worker. Her name is Trixie. And Mr. Gleason said, get me that serious actress. And that was you. Oh, yeah. So I just fell into it without an agent which is not a good idea. No. So you didn't have the same contract then? No. Uh, <laughs> no. Contract. No. What was your salary like back? We were trying to figure out in 1952. Very little. Yeah, Very what little. would it Just, be? Just, you know, little hundreds. You know? That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we were... We I didn't have the big contract to start. No, I know, but I'm just no. saying well, it must have been very little uh, compared to what it is today. I know what I got, and I uh, was, when we first did these sketches of the Honeymooners, it was every other week. Right. It wasn't weekly when we started. Right. And I got $500 every two weeks. Every two weeks. So, so that's $250, $250 a show. And you were getting? Well, I started out with only $250 every, every other week. But is you know, it, you could buy a lot with that. Oh, 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 it's, oh, it's different <laughs> days. Different. Absolutely. What was it like to work with Gleason? Did he ad lib a lot? Not as much as people no. think. Yeah, because all these books are coming out now. And it's, well, uh, that, oh, he learned please. the words. We had great words from great writers. Wonderful writers. We all Who was learned Neil Simon was one of the writers for a while. He didn't hang around too not, long. Not at uh, um, CBS. No, no, no before no. or after? Um, we had, it was Marvin before. Marks. It was a cavalcade. Marvin Marks Marks Stone and Stone were wonderful. Leonard yeah. Stern Leonard and Stern. Sid Zelenka. Uh, Russell and Finn. Yeah, Russell and Finn. And um, Schwartz was there for a short time. Yeah. What yeah. about... Um, Working with Art Carney, did you do a lot with him? It mainly with uh, well, I think he mainly did things yeah. with, yeah, with Jackie. Jackie yeah. Yeah. But uh, Art's a doll, a dream, oh. a wonderful man, so sweet and shy. He, he's Painful not like uh, Ed Norton yeah. at all. No. <laughs> How did it feel for you? The two of you didn't continue. Now, you didn't continue because you were married. 
Well, as now, he, he went off, and he was off for a while before he went yeah. back on. Yeah. A couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. But when they, did they ask yeah. you to come back, though? The first time, he didn't ask me to come back. The first, okay. It was, that's when he was changing his thing around a little bit. And then I, when I was married, and they wanted me to come, he did work with Sue Ann. Right, because you couldn't. couldn't cause, yeah. What about you? Well, I was busy with a husband and a child, and, uh, no, he never contacted me. We were never terribly close. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Gleason was um, a distant man, certainly with me. Yeah. You know. but oh, I loved him. I had the best time with that man. Did you? Why? Fast. Well, he was interested in things that I'm interested in, like psychic phenomena and uh, odd, strange things that happen that... that there's no real explanation for you just accept it or you don't right. and I used to talk to him about uh, getting a divorce because Bishop Sheehan was backstage almost every single Saturday night with those gorgeous blue eyes of his but it wasn't helping Jackie get a divorce and he was so in love with Marilyn Marilyn was June's sister Marilyn, Marilyn Taylor. Taylor Marilyn Taylor was June Taylor the choreographer's, the choreographer's sister. sister and yes. a dancer there and a dancer, dancer. And he wanted to marry her. Yeah. And they were having an affair. They, they were having well, they were, yeah, they were well, a big talk. romance. Yeah. yeah. Well, we today, called it romances in those days. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah. But uh, I said, you know, Jackie, why don't you think about it in the eyes of God instead of the eyes of the church? And he said, oh, you're a missionary's daughter. You're giving me all that stuff. And I said, well, you know, how can I escape that? But one time he was so funny. I was crossing the stage and he was coming from the other side, coming right across to, to me, and he, sort of under his breath, he said, I know it's never going to happen, Odd, but he said, you know, if we ever did do it, we'd have to do it in the kitchen. <laughs> Very funny. What about you? Of all the things that happened, what is the highlight? Like, you look back, you have certain yeah. stories. What are some of the stories you think back, you go, that was fun, or that was silly, or, or that was a good day? Well, the whole thing was fun all the yeah. years. It were, were wonderful, and, you know, so proud to be yeah. part of it. But uh, uh, we saw so little of Mr. Gleason that, that it was a serious day on Saturday. It, it wasn't yeah. Uh, yeah. a ha-ha day, you know. We, we worked hard. What was the worst thing that ever happened to you on the air that you thought, I'm going to die, let me die right now, God? Nothing that terrible, because we all had little scenes together, and we were just like, letter perfect together. Yeah, you know? no, <laughs> but don't you remember the time I got tongue twisted with you and said I, I had taken the garbage to wash and the, and the laundry to the, I don't know what I said, but I was so mixed up, all this gibberish, and you she was looking at me, <laughs> absolutely fascinated. She got a little glassy-eyed, like, when is she going to come out of this spell? <laughs> She's such a good time, I knew she'd get out of it herself. What? And then we'll go to commercial. What are your two favorite episodes, each one? What was your favorite episode? What was your favorite episode? Mm -hmm. uh, well, I guess whenever I had a little bit more to do, yeah, so I would like that. Oh, uh, the sleepwalker, where, you know, yeah. uh, he was looking good. for Lulu the yeah. dog. That's a cute one. Right, yeah, right. it was like that. My favorite was the adoption, when we adopted the baby. And at the very end, the mother wants the baby back, and yeah. we had to give the baby back, and it was a very sad ending. And the f switchboard was tied up at CBS for a day and a half, I think, with people calling in, believing it so thoroughly, they said, they do not have to give that baby back. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yes, people... they were so with it, so Which into brings, it. I know we have to go, like you said, one more thing. That brings up a whole other point. Did the... Being on the honeymoon, I mean, was so identified with the two of you as yes. being mm -hmm. the, the parts. Did it help or hurt your careers? It hurt. I, uh, it, hurt it hurt yours, hurt. yes, because you were Trixie. You yeah. walked down the street, they, they would say, yeah. hello, Trixie. Yeah, okay. so, but I was you know, happy at home with a, a baby and yeah. everything. What about you? I think it hurt for a while. Every job I got seemed to be in the kitchen. I got a yeah. commercial in the kitchen. Yeah. I mean, uh, the association was so strong. And what saved me, I think, was I got a call from, I thought it was a rib, Alfred Hitchcock sent for me to go out and do a dramatic show. I was so excited, I was out of my skull when I realized it was for real. And I had the best time with him. He was fascinating. Yeah, because it was different from... Totally different. Yeah. It was a dramatic part. We'll be back with more in a moment. And when we come back, we're going to meet a woman who worked behind the scenes on The Honeymoon. So stay with us.